this is Dr. Sharice Flanagan. again. Today I'll be talking about personality testing and continuing part one. This, this is part two of personality testing. In this segment, I will be talking primarily about the uh, MMPI-2. Okay, so let's talk about the MMPI. That was, um, that was the NEO, and the MMPI-2 is the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. It was developed by Hathaway and McKinley back in 1939. So when I say it's the granddaddy of all personality tests, it has been around for a long time. 567 items. It takes a long time to complete this, one to two hours for most people. It's in a true or false um, format, also called dichotomous, yes, no. So it'll ask you things. Do you smell things that other people don't smell? Uh, yes or no. Uh, do you have stomach aches? Yes or no. And you have to decide because that might be kind of hard. Well, like Everybody has a stomach ache occasionally. But it's sort of a general, general approach, a forced choice. And it... It's been through some revisions and additions, but m largely it has stayed the same. And lots of the language is the same too, you'll see in a minute. It had a massive re-standardization in 1989 where we looked at more uh, current norms. Um, and then there was another revision uh, in, mm, I forget what year the was, that was, where there were um, in the 90s, the late 90s I believe, where the, the restructured um, scales came into play. And there, there is an adolescent version called the MMPIA, and it, this comes in lots and lots of different languages. You can get this on audio uh, for people who can't read and so forth, so it's, it's quite extensive. One of the really cool things about the MMPI-2 is the, the sophisticated validity scales. The biggest problem with self-report or uh, subjective, I'm sorry, objective personality tests is that people can lie, right? I mean, I mentioned it a minute ago. You don't have to tell me the truth on a test. But the MMPI really picks up on a lot of these things. It's used, uh, it's widely, widely used in forensics. So one of the things it does in the L scale, and I do, um, I do want you to pay attention to these five. There's more than these validity scales, but I want you to look at these five. The lie scale um, is elevated when people are trying to present themselves in the most positive light. Sometimes this is kind of appropriate if you're looking for a job or you're you're wanting to be a police officer, for example. You want to present yourself in a positive light, but if you're so defensive that you will not admit to any uh, negative symptoms, then the profile isn't valid. We know that you've, you've faked good, basically. The F scale is the opposite of that. It's it's called the infrequency scale, um, but a lot of people refer to this as the fake bad scale because people who have elevations on this um, seem to endorse all kinds of psychopathology. And sometimes it's, it's so high that you can't really trust it. Um, perhaps they're motivated to have a very clinical profile. Imagine someone who's on trial and they're trying to, they're, they're trying to establish themselves as um, criminally insane or something like that. Uh, so you've got some people that might fake bad for that reason, but you might also have some elevations here, just a tendency to focus on a lot of these angsty things because someone has a lot of problems. So you get elevations there too. It could just be a lot of psychopathology. The K, you see these things together and, and in graduate school, you'll learn to interpret them you know, in a, is it an a inverted V? Is it a V? Is it a check mark? So there's some patterns here that you, you learn to interpret. But at, at a basic level, K is a correction scale. It generally supports the L and the F scale. It, it's, it's telling you a little bit about how defensive someone was when they approached it. The trend stands for true response inconsistency. Basically, this is looking for the person who who just went through and wrote all true or all false. Um, not just true, false, as in they bubbled, because some of these are reverse coded, but um, but just, uh, yeah, some random some randomness there. And then Vren, the variable response and consistency, is also looking, it's really looking for that random profile where people might have just sat and bubbled in 
um, things just to pass the time, just to get through it. They didn't read every question carefully. So all of these scales and some others are used to determine whether the profile, the test, is even valid. There are times when the, there will be indications from these scales such that it's someone faked bad, their, their F scale was so high that you can't interpret the profile. So sometimes you'll have an entire, you'll look at these scales and go, well, I cannot even use this. So I want to show you the clinical scales. There are many, 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 many others, but these are the, the 10 main clinical scales that most psychologists rely on these the most. And um, we start with, and we call these by the number. I want you to know that in the um, psychologists, it's like a, a code that we use. You know, we'll say, oh, well, they were a 2-7, or, you know, there's a neurotic triad, or, um, yeah, they're, they're elevated on 6-7-8. So we have groupings, and we talk about them not by their names, but by their numbers, just kind of FYI. So scale one is hypochondriasis. You'll notice this is kind of an old-fashioned word. Uh, you don't hear that other places, but it still reflects uh, that hypochondriac kind of personality. These people are very concerned with physical symptoms, with, um, you know, they have lots of headaches and tummy aches and gastrointestinal problems. They may have back tension, um, all kinds of different physical responses. So you can have someone who just focuses a lot on their physical uh, symptoms so they may and, and they may be sick okay they could have they could have elevations here if they're actually sick but they also could have this if they just interpret psychological pain as physical pain um, and so that's a certain kind of person that you might see in therapy that they have this um, general vague complaints about lack of energy or sleep problems, those kinds of things. Uh, but they don't tend to be um, terribly psychopathic, if you will. Scale two is depression. So that's um, basically what it looks like. Depressive symptoms, hopelessness, kind of a pessimistic um, outlook, if you will. Uh, it also picks up on um, suicidal. There's questions about whether someone's suicidal or not. Um, and it may also reflect some low self-esteem. Scale three is hysteria. And this is a very old word. And we do not call people hysterical now. They would be offended. It's not widely used. It's not a clinical term that we use. So this is reflecting some of the old-fashioned kind of terminology. So scale three is um, people, this is similar in some ways, so sometimes you, you'll see a 1-3 um, with, a, with a dip on 2. So high 1-3 with a dip. This is this inverted V um, where people really don't understand their own um, psychopathology. But they've got this awareness of general emotional turmoil. But they're not terribly insightful. They may be kind of egocentric. Um, but generally kind of talkative and likable. They... They use indirect measures to get attention and affection from people. But they don't often really, you know, they, they don't really understand their psychological problems. Scale four, psychopathic deviant. These people um, have uh, low respect for society's rules and authority. They're high in conflict. Um, they may be impatient or impulsive, um, show anger, um, and they may be pretty insensitive to others. So if you have a high four like that, you may be seen as pretty self-centered. Um, scale five is a masculinity, fe femininity scale. So this has been on here um, for many years. Um, it was originally uh, meant to identify homosexuality. It does not work. It is not built like that. Of course, now you would just ask someone these questions, but it's really... Uh, now we would say it just measures those stereotypical kind of interests of men and women. Scale six is paranoia. Um, this could be people who are frankly psychotic, uh, but they have low trust, they're suspicious, they are guarded, they may think they're getting a raw deal out of life. 
people high on seven. Uh, this is really kind of what we consider the psychasthenia is uh, the new term for that is anxiety. Really, we consider this to be our anxiety scale. People high on the scale are anxious and tense. And they're agitated. They may be irritable. Um, they could be obsessive, um, compulsive, ritualistic kind of. But um, you see, you see those elevations with most people with anxiety disorders. Scale eight is the schizophrenic scale, schizophrenia. And people with high elevations here um, may have a psychotic disorder. Uh, they may show really odd, eccentric um, behavior. But not everybody with elevations on this is schizophrenic. They could be so socially alienated. And that could be because they have um, such high social anxiety that they have isolated themselves. Um, or it could be something more clinical. Um, but there's a lot of sensory items on this scale that ask, you know, if you see or smell or, you know, do you, do you see visions that other people don't see? Or are you being followed? Um, those kinds of things. Scale 9 is the mania scale. And this picks up on a level of excitability. People with this may have accelerated speech. They could have delusions of grandeur, flight of ideas. Uh, they may start tons of different projects. Um, they may have a grandiosity. So you can imagine a 2-9 profile, depression and mania, may be showing, you know, semantic depressive kinds of or some bipolar um, tendencies. And then there's scale zero, which interestingly, scale zero um, seems like it should be a 10, right? Well, it's because back in the day, uh, the computers didn't like those multiple digits, and so they, they named it zero. Um, this is just a social introversion. Uh, high scores are socially introverted. Low scores are more extroverted. So um, there's a little more that, that goes into that. Um, really high scores here may show some lack of self-confidence. Uh, people may experience people with a really high, others, others may experience high zero, people with high zeros to be maybe cold or distant. Um, so, all right, so those are the basic clinical scales. I want to quickly just show you, I'm going to, I'm going to flip over to another set of slides. And I just wanted to walk through or just show you a little bit how something like this might be interpreted. Um, so this is a completely random response period. This, this scale is um, invalid. If you see these two lines down here, they go from 50 to 65. These are normal, all right? Most of us, hopefully, most of our responses would be within a T-score of 50 and 65. Um, this one has, and you can't see these really, really well, but this has an F score um, that's up way over 100, and 100 is invalid. The FP, FB, all of these are, are fake bad kinds of profiles. So, uh, but also the fact that the K um, is uh, is near 50, this is this is just indicating that this was a completely response, um, random response. Here's an all true response. You see a a similar um, block up there at the top where those were. Um, this person just responded everything in a true pattern. Here's an all-false profile. So it looks different, um, but it's it's a um, also an invalid profile. When you've got these things up over 100, that's when we start uh, looking at things and, and saying there's something wrong with this. And so when these validity scales, so watch my cursor here, over here are all the validity scales. When these are in show us that are invalid. We don't even look at this. We can't, we can't do much with it. Here's a negative self-presentation. Um, and I've got, um, okay, so the, the white dots, this blank dot up here, this inverted V is another fake bad. This is showing us elevations, the one with the black dots. Uh, 
a psychiatric profile. And so you have an inverted V, but your F is still just at an 80. And so in this case, we're saying this person just has a lot going on. Um, they're experiencing a lot of, a lot of pain, um, psychological pain, but it's not invalid. Uh, but it does give us that indication that they are crying out for help and, and telling us what's wrong. And then this last one is just a standard, um, this is more normative. You see these are right here in the normal range. All right, if you look over at the clinical scales of this, this is where it gets kind of fun and interesting. Um, so here you've got this top one is showing us the fake bad. Again, we can't really interpret this because it's so, it's, so, it's invalid. But you see um, these elevations over here on 789 or 678 are very high. Um, the black one is going to be the most interesting. So let's look at this. Um, here you have... Um, a six and an eight, all right? And this is, is the paranoia and schizophrenic kinds of scales. So you're seeing some of this psychopathology here um, with, with um, some concerns about uh, a lot of interpersonal problems. It, it may not be in the, in the psychiatric clinical range, so I'm not thinking that this person would be uh, schizophrenic. Um, I would expect those to be higher if if that were the case. But I would say that this person is probably very socially isolated. They're experiencing a lot of anger and authority problems. Um, and so I would probably be looking at this at these profiles over here. This is just a positive um, profile. You've got the backwards check over here with your validity scales and just flat over here. We don't have a lot of information there. So that concludes an introduction to personality testing for tests and measurements. Um, the, the two main tests that we were talking about here were the MMPI and the NEO. The two types of testing we were talking about were subjective and objective or um, subjective. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting my... Yeah, have to start over. That brings us to the end of the introduction to personality testing. We talked mainly, just to summarize the points here, we talked about objective versus projective testing, looked at the most common, commonly used uh, objective test versus projective tests, uh, and then we looked closely at two objective personality tests, the MMPI and the NEO.